A battle cruiser, or battle cruiser, was a large capital ship built in the first half of the 20th century. They were similar in size and cost to a battleship, and typically carried the same kind of heavy guns, but generally carried less armor and were faster. The first battle cruisers were designed in the United Kingdom in the first decade of the century, as a development of the armored cruiser. At the same time as the dreadnought succeeded the pre-dreadnought battleship, the original aim of the battle cruiser was to hunt down slower, older armored cruisers and destroy them with heavy gunfire. However, as more and more battle cruisers were built, they increasingly became used alongside the better protected battleships. Battle cruisers served in the navies of Britain, Germany, the Ottoman Empire, Australia and Japan during World War I, most notably at the Battle of the Falkland Islands and in the several raids and skirmishes in the North Sea which culminated in a pitched fleet battle, the Battle of Jutland. British battle cruisers in particular suffered heavy losses at Jutland, where their light armor made them very vulnerable to large caliber shells. By the end of the war, capital ship design had developed with battleships becoming faster and battle cruisers becoming more heavily armored, blurring the distinction between a battle cruiser and a fast battleship. The Washington Naval Treaty, which limited capital ship construction from 1922 onwards, treated battleships and battle cruisers identically, and the new generation of battle cruisers planned was scrapped under the terms of the treaty. From the 1930s, only the Royal Navy continued to use battle cruiser as a classification for warships. For the World War I era capital ships that remained in the fleet. Nevertheless, the fast, light capital ships developed by Germany and France of the Scharnhorst and Dunkirk classes, respectively, are sometimes referred to as battle cruisers. World War II saw battle cruisers in action again, only one of which survived the war. There was also renewed interest in large cruiser killer type warships, but few were ever begun. As construction of capital ships was curtailed in favor of more needed convoy escorts, aircraft carriers, and cargo ships. In the post-Cold War era, the Soviet Kirov class of large guided missile cruisers have also been termed battle cruisers. Background The battle cruiser was developed by the Royal Navy in the first years of the 20th century as an evolution of the armored cruiser. The first armored cruisers had been built in the 1870s as an attempt to give armor protection to ships fulfilling the typical cruiser roles of patrol, trade protection and power projection. However, the results were rarely satisfactory, as the weight of armor required for any meaningful protection usually meant that the ship became almost as slow as a battleship. As a result, navies preferred to build protected cruisers with an armored deck protecting their engines, or simply no armor at all. In the 1890s, technology began to change this balance. New Krupp steel armor meant that it was now possible to give a cruiser side armor which would protect it against the quick-firing guns of enemy battleships and cruisers alike. In 1896-97 France and Russia, who were regarded as likely allies in the event of war, started to build large, fast armored cruisers taking advantage of this. In the event of a war between Britain and France or Russia, or both, these cruisers threatened to cause serious difficulties for the British Empire's worldwide trade. Britain, which had concluded in 1892 that it needed twice as many cruisers as any potential enemy to adequately protect its empire's sea lanes, responded to the perceived threat by laying down its own large armoured cruisers. Between 1899 and 1905, it completed or laid down seven classes of this type, a total of 35 ships. This building program, in turn, prompted the French and Russians to increase their own construction. The Imperial German Navy began to build large armored cruisers for use on their overseas stations, laying down eight between 1897 and 1906. The cost of this cruiser arms race was significant. In the period 1889-96, the Royal Navy spent £7.3 million on new large cruisers. 
From 1897 to 1904, it spent £26.9 million. Many armoured cruisers of the new kind were just as large and expensive as the equivalent battleship. The battleship's main advantage was its 12-inch heavy guns, and heavier armour designed to protect from shells of similar size. However, for a few years after 1900 it seemed that those advantages were of little practical value. The torpedo now had a range of 2,000 yards, and it seemed unlikely that a battleship would engage within torpedo range. However, at ranges of more than 2,000 yards it became increasingly unlikely that the heavy guns of a battleship would score any hits, as the heavy guns relied on primitive aiming techniques. The secondary batteries of 6-inch quick-firing guns, firing more plentiful shells, were more likely to hit the enemy. As naval expert Fred T. Jane wrote in June 1902, Is there anything outside of 2,000 yards that the big gun in its hundreds of tons of medieval castle can affect, that its weight in 6-inch guns without the castle could not affect equally well? And inside 2000, what, in these days of gyros, is there that the torpedo cannot affect with far more certainty? In 1904, Admiral John Jackie Fisher became First Sea Lord, the senior officer of the Royal Navy. He had for some time thought about the development of a new fast armoured ship. He was very fond of the second-class battleship Renown, a faster, more lightly armoured battleship. As early as 1901, there is confusion in Fish's writing about whether he saw the battleship or the cruiser as the model for future developments. This did not stop him from commissioning designs from naval architect W. H. Guard for an armoured cruiser with the heaviest possible armament for use with the fleet. The design Guard submitted was for a ship between 14,000-15,000 long tons, capable of 25 knots. Armed with 49.2-INCH and 12.7.5-INCH guns in twin gun turrets and protected with 6 inches of armor along her belt and 9.2-INCH turrets, 4 inches on her 7.5-INCH turrets, 10 inches on her conning tower and up to 2.5 inches on her decks. However, mainstream British naval thinking between 1902 and 1904 was clearly in favour of heavily armoured battleships, rather than the fast ships that Fisher favoured. The Battle of Tsushima proved conclusively the effectiveness of heavy guns over intermediate ones and the need for a uniform main calibre on a ship, for fire control, even before this. The Royal Navy had begun to consider a shift away from the mixed-caliber armament of the 1890s pre-dreadnought to an all-big-guns design, and preliminary designs circulated for battleships with all 12-inch or all 10-inch guns and armored cruisers with all 9.2-inch guns. In late 1904, not long after the Royal Navy had decided to use 12-inch guns for its next generation of battleships because of their superior performance at long range, Fisher began to argue that big-gun cruisers could replace battleships altogether. The continuing improvement of the torpedo meant that submarines and destroyers would be able to destroy battleships. This in Fisher's view heralded the end of the battleship or at least compromised the validity of heavy armor protection. Nevertheless, armored cruisers would remain vital for commerce protection. Of what use is a battle fleet to a country called at war with a country called possessing no battleships? But having fast armoured cruisers and clouds of fast torpedo craft, what damage would battleships do to, would wish for a few battleships or for more armoured cruisers, would not willingly exchange a few battleships for more fast armoured cruisers. In such a case, neither side wanting battleships is presumptive evidence that they are not of much value. Fisher to Lord Selborne the 20th of October 1904 Fisher's views were very controversial within the Royal Navy, and even given his position as First Sea Lord, he was not in a position to insist on his own approach. Thus he assembled a committee on designs, consisting of a mixture of civilian and naval experts. 
to determine the approach to both battleship and armoured cruiser construction in the future. While the stated purpose of the committee was to investigate and report on future requirements of ships, Fisher and his associates had already made key decisions. The terms of reference for the committee were for a battleship capable of 21 knots with 12-inch guns and no intermediate calibers, capable of docking an existing dry dicks, and a cruiser capable of 25.5 knots, also with 12-inch guns and no intermediate armament. Armoured like Minotaur, the most recent armoured cruiser, and also capable of using existing docks. First battle cruisers. Under the Selborne Plan of 1902, the Royal Navy intended to start three new battleships and four armoured cruisers each year. However, in late 1904 it became clear that the 1905-6 programme would have to be considerably smaller, because of lower than expected tax revenue and the need to buy out two Chilean battleships under construction in British yards lest they be purchased by the Russians for use against the Japanese, Britain's ally. These economies meant that the 1905-6 program consisted only of one battleship, but three armoured cruisers. The battleship became the revolutionary battleship Dreadnought, and the cruisers became the three ships of the Invincible class. Fisher later claimed, however, that he had argued during the committee for the cancellation of the remaining battleship. The construction of the new class were begun in 1906 and completed in 1908, delayed perhaps to allow their designers to learn from any problems with Dreadnought. The ships fulfilled the design requirement quite closely, on a displacement similar to Dreadnought. The Invincibles were 40 feet longer to accommodate additional boilers and more powerful turbines to propel them at 25 knots. Moreover, the new ships could maintain this speed for days, whereas pre-dreadnought battleships could not generally do so for more than an hour. Armed with eight 12-inch MKX guns, compared to 10 on dreadnought, they had 6 to 7 inches of armor protecting the hull and the gun turrets. At its thickest, the class had a very marked increase in speed, displacement and firepower compared to the most recent armored cruisers but no more armor. While the Invincibles were to fill the same role as the armored cruisers they succeeded, they were expected to do so more effectively. Specifically their roles were heavy reconnaissance. Because of their power, the Invincibles could sweep away the screen of enemy cruisers to close with and observe an enemy battle fleet before using their superior speed to retire, close support for the battle fleet. They could be stationed at the ends of the battle line to stop enemy cruisers harassing the battleships, and to harass the enemy's battleships if they were busy fighting battleships. Also, the Invincibles could operate as the fast wing of the battle fleet and try to outmaneuver the enemy pursuit. If an enemy fleet ran, then the Invincibles would use their speed to pursue, and the guns to damage or slow enemy ships. Commerce Protection The new ships would hunt down enemy cruisers and commerce raiders. Confusion about how to refer to these new battleship size armored cruisers set in almost immediately. Even in late 1905, before work was begun on the Invincibles, a Royal Navy memorandum refers to large armored ships, meaning both battleships and large cruisers. In October 1906, the Admiralty began to classify all post dreadnought battleships and armored cruisers as capital ships. While Fisher used the term dreadnought to refer either to his new battleships or the battleships and armored cruisers together, at the same time, the Invincible class themselves were referred to as cruiser battleships. Dreadnought cruisers, the term battle cruiser, was first used by Fisher in 1908. Finally, on 24 November 1911, Admiralty Weekly Order No. 
351 laid down that all cruisers are the invincible and later types are for the future to be described and classified as battle cruisers to distinguish them from the armored cruisers of earlier date. Along with questions over the new ship's nomenclature came uncertainty about their actual role due to their lack of protection. If they were primarily to act as scouts for the battle fleet and hunter killers of enemy cruisers and commerce raiders, then the seven inches of belt armor with which they had been equipped would be adequate. If, on the other hand, they were expected to reinforce a battle line of dreadnoughts with their own heavy guns, they were too thin-skinned to be safe from an enemy's heavy guns. The Invincibles were essentially extremely large, heavily armed, fast armored cruisers. However, the viability of the armored cruiser was already in doubt. A cruiser that could have worked with the fleet might have been a more viable option for taking over that role. Because of the Invincibles' size and armament, naval authorities considered them capital ships almost from their inception, an assumption that might have been inevitable. Complicating matters further was that many naval authorities, including Lord Fisher, had made over-optimistic assessments from the Battle of Tsushima in 1905 about the armored cruiser's ability to survive in a battle line against enemy capital ships due to their superior speed. These assumptions had been made without taking into account the Russian Baltic fleet's inefficiency and tactical ineptitude. By the time the term battlecruiser had been given to the Invincibles, the idea of their parity with battleships had been fixed in many people's minds. Not everyone was so convinced. Brassi S. Naval Annual, for instance, stated that with vessels as large and expensive as the Invincibles, an admiral will be certain to put them in the line of battle where their comparatively light protection will be a disadvantage and their high speed of no value. Those in favor of the battle cruiser counted with two points. First, since all capital ships were vulnerable to new weapons such as the torpedo, armor had lost some of its validity, and second, because of its greater speed, the battle cruiser could control the range at which it engaged an enemy.